Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Audacious Church. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Pleasure to have you with us today. Um, it is my honour and privilege to be able to kind of share with you in today's devotion. My name is Olu. I'm part of the North location. Um, I'm so glad that you could join us. If you've not had the privilege of, of, of joining before, We've been going through the book of Proverbs and today we've landed on the book of Proverbs chapter 22. Um, so I encourage you to go and read the chapter through in your own time. We won't read everything today. Um, but amongst my favourite in this verse is, for example, verse 1, where um, it says, A good name is to be chosen above great riches. Or verse 6, mm. it says, Train a child in the way of the Lord and when they grow, they will not depart from it plenty more in there so please do go and read uh, but for today we're going to focus on verse 29 which says do you see a man who excels in his work he will stand before kings and not mere men now it's clear in the bible that god really wants us to be an excellent people starting from his own work when he created the heavens and the earth through to when he was speaking to moses about building the ark of the covenant and giving this really kind of elaborate description about what it needed to be and saying i've given you men and women who have got the spirit of excellence in them to be able to accomplish this through to the temple of solomon the bible says people came from far and wide all over the world to see this temple that solomon had built um, and it wasn't just the sheer amount of gold and silver and rich wood that was in it but it was also the skill and the craftsmanship that had gone into it into the New Testament, where Paul in Philippians 2 8 says, If there's anything that's excellent, then please dwell and gather around these things. God wants us to be an excellent people. But I hear you say, What then is excellence? You would have heard um, our pastors speak about excellence. For example, Pastor Paul Reed spoke and said, Excellence is not um, a standard, it is a spirit, it's not a destination, but a journey. What I'd like to do today is give you some things that I think characterize the spirit of excellence in the hope that it helps us begin this journey towards excellence, which I'm sure we're already traveling on. And these are just to help guide us. So um, I've called this the seas of excellence and I hope it blesses you. Starting off with number one, clarity. Excellence requires focus. Focus requires clarity. Clarity takes time and deliberate effort to get right. You ask anyone who's excelling at what they do, they'll be able to tell you very quickly what they're doing and why, i.e. they've spent the time getting very clear on where they need to focus. And focus is important because we can't do everything well, or we can't excel at everything. We need to choose those few things that we're going to excel at. But in order to choose a few things that we're gonna excel at, we need to be clear on what we want to do and why. Um, this is kind of demonstrated, or the Bible, shall I say, demonstrates this clearly in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, where it says, write the vision, make it plain, so that those that read it can run with it. Excellence needs clarity. Clarity is what gives us the focus that we need to be able to excel. Number two, continuity. There is a famous quote commonly attributed to Aristotle that says, we are what we repeated, repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. In essence, excellence comes not from the few things that we do or the things that we do um, now and again, it comes from the things that we do repeatedly, time and time and time again. You may have heard of the theory of 10,000 hours to mastery. And essentially what it is behind it is saying that those who have attained to a high level of excellence in their field would have spent about 10,000 hours just practicing and doing things time and time and time again. Now the number of hours itself is debated, but what's not debated is that those who excel at what they do have spent time honing and crafting their skill. Excellence is a habit, continuity. We've got to continue at it or we've got to build the muscle or the habits that we need to be able to be excellent at what we want to be excellent at. The Bible supports this in Luke 8 15 where Jesus is speaking the parable of the sower and saying this is the seed that fell on good ground and good heart and this is those who heard the word or this, these are those who heard the word and with perseverance 
were able to produce fruit. That perseverance there, I think, is about the daily grind, the continual habits, things that we need to do in order to be able to produce through clarity, continuity, number three, courage. And when I say courage, you may immediately think about stepping into big opportunities. You may also think about standing up to injustices. Both are true and require courage. But the part of courage that I think sometimes we maybe sometimes forget is the courage to be able to say no to well-meaning opportunities that just don't fit with the focus that God has given to us. I know we always prepare for stepping out into these big things and these big visions and it's very easy when something's wrong to stand up to it or at least it's clear that we need to stand up to it but what we sometimes don't prepare for is those things that come our way that seem well-meaning that seem like they fit but actually are not quite what we need or not quite where God wants us to focus again this comes from clarity but sometimes it's hard because these well-meaning opportunities come from people that we like people that we love, but we've just got to find the courage to say, no, this is not my focus. Joshua chapter one, verse nine says, this is my command, be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord, your God is with you wherever you go. We must also find the courage to say no. Number four, confidence. Confidence is developed by practicing. And our confidence grows as we make personal, professional, spiritual, communal accomplishments. And this is not about confidence sort of saying, you know, I don't need God. This is quite the contrary. This is acknowledging that God has given me a gift and I really, really need to work at that gift in order for God to be able to use that gift. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 6 to 7 says, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you. Our confidence comes as we're able to make small accomplishments day in and day out with the gifts and the skills that God has given to us. Confidence comes through practicing because we become more confident in the gift that God has given to us and we become more confident in stepping out and using that further and wider. Number five, connection. Excellence does not exist in a vacuum. If you read the autobiographies of any of the heroes or any person that you think is excelling at what they, they do, you will hear the stories of mentors, teachers, fathers, mothers, peers, families, followers. It was never done in isolation. It was never done alone. The lesson then essentially is that we need to stay humble. We need to stay teachable. We need to stay vulnerable because we can never do any of these things all by ourselves. God himself has ordained it that we are a communal people. If we're gonna be excellent, there are gonna be people around us that we need to kind of connect with and ask for help. Philippians 2.3 says it best, let nothing be done through selfish ambition. No one is an island to themselves. We need connection. Number six, and finally, conviction. There's nothing that stifles excellence like a lack of conviction. Um, a lack of conviction can dampen the impact of even the sharpest and greatest of skills. Have you ever heard a storyteller tell a story without conviction? Or have you heard a leader speak about a direction that they want us to take, but lacking conviction in what they see? A lack of conviction dampens the impact of even the sharpest of skills. But on the contrary, a deep conviction can take the smallest of gifts and make the greatest of impacts. I'm reminded of David on the battlefield with Goliath, who was deeply convinced that God was going to give him the victory that day. And therefore he took his three stones, he needed only one, sunk it into the head of Goliath and Goliath fell down dead. We may have the continuity, we may have the clarity, we may have the courage, we may have the confidence, but if we're lacking the conviction, we will look down in our hands and see just a stone rather than an instrument in God's hand that can have a greater and wider impact as we believe in the purpose that God has uh, given to us. So there you go, six things that I think help us characterize the spirit of excellence. Clarity continuity, confidence, courage, connection, conviction. And I hope by God's grace, 
that you can begin to start on that journey of excellence today. Let's pray. God, thank you that you call us to be excellent. Thank you that you call us to be an excellent people. Thank you, Father, Lord God Almighty, that you want us to excel in everything that we do. And I pray for everyone looking up to you right now, Father, to help them move into something or to move to somewhere. I pray that you help build their confidence. I pray that you help them find the time to put in, Lord, to the gift that you've given to them, to develop it, to hone it, for it to become better. So that, Lord, we can become an excellent people and that we can shine our light to the world and that may see the glory of God in us in Jesus' name. Thank you for hearing this prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.